All right, everyone. Good morning. Actually, it's good afternoon. It is uh, it's 1 p.m. here. So, what's up, Sam? Hey, welcome in. Good to see you, Lednor. As always, man. Steady Eddie. Good to see you as well, Cyrax W. What's up, guys? This is a very rare stream for a Sunday for me, honestly. Um, this morning we did a lot of cleaning of the house. Sunday's kind of like the clean day, the go, go shopping for groceries day, church day, stuff like that. And, uh, got a lot of those things done today. So, uh, yeah, my wife is actually out running errands right now. Um, I was going to go to the grocery store with her, but I know she was going to like other places to run errands. So I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go. I'll just stay, I'll stay back and try to do something productive. And uh, I don't know if this is considered productive, but uh, hey, we're going to have a good time. So happy Sunday, wherever you're at in the world. Let's get this started here. Lednor, thank you so much for that uh, that tier one subscription. Five months, my man. Five months. Thank you so much, man. Always great having you. Okay, so uh, hard mode it is. W, thank you so much for that five months again. Appreciate it, guys. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Turn my volume up. Kick this stuff. Let's get going here. So last episode, we... Let's see. We completed all the tasks in uh, Mountain Ridge here. So pretty much it's going to be contracts from now on. And just... uh. Yeah, start feeding contracts through. You just finished your session of SR for the last couple days. I've been finishing up the contest. Nice, man. Let's do this. Let's do the repair here. Oh, the scout trailer's out. Should just delete this thing then. I don't need it. Why do I even need it? Yeah, don't even need it. That's awesome, man. You're finishing up the contest in Michigan, Alaska, and Tamir. Yeah, the contests can be interesting, right? <laughs> to say the least. All right. Put on full screen. Oh, man. Okay, scout the first area. I guess I could probably just go do this real quick. Um... I mean, I do have a truck here. I can just go do this right now, which is the crocodile. That That's actually a better idea. And I'll just bring the croc back to this. Yeah. Just go do this, this real quick. It's kind of crazy. There's a, uh, a scouting mission for um, a contract, right? Kind of weird. Okay, I don't know if I want to do this. Do I want to blow my tire right now? Yeah, no, we're good. Good to go. Alright. It already got a photo mode? Really? That's awesome. That's awesome. I've seen the... I've been kind of keeping tabs on... 
Oh, dude, this truck just blazes, bro. I almost think I would probably feel safer with the the balloons, but I think these are these tires are pretty much the move, though. Um, I've been I've been looking at the a lot of the reviews on Steam, and uh, they're very mixed. I think in one day the Steam reviews fell um, fell four percent. From 58% to 54, and now they're 53. So, I don't know. I mean, I do think, uh, genuinely, from the developers just updating the game, it's it's going to be a better product for for sure. I just, here's the thing, is like, I'm not betting against um, Expeditions in any way. I, I kind of want it to be successful, because I think then that allows for the developer to basically have resources to create a new game, right? Because I'm hoping Expeditions doesn't last too long, to be quite honest, as as a game in itself. Um, but then again, I think from a consumer standpoint, like, when something isn't good, like, normally, like, a normal consumer doesn't, like, check back. Like, oh, did they, did they fix it? Like, I think that's not really how it, how it goes. Like, usually, like, after... After someone says, like, hey, this is crap, they just move on totally and forget about it. And then maybe at some point, perhaps, like, there's a small percentage of folks who come back and say, like, okay, let's see if they fix it. And they, they do come back and then they enjoy it. But hoping that could be the case for some people. You wish they had some type of respawn in case of failure, aka tipping and flipping in the middle of nowhere. Oh, for the contest? Oh, yeah, that's true. Okay, I'm gonna take this spray right back, put this in. Nothing caught your eye, no campfires, rubbish, great news. Okay, cool, that's done. Yeah, it was rushed. From from what I've heard from a source that I can't really say, it was all I can say it was it was rushed out the door. So I think they're doing a good job at, at responding, but I guess, like, how do I say this? How much is that response just damage control? Um, I don't know. I mean, who knows, man? I'm just a, I'm just a guy. <laughs> so, what's up? What's up, Victor? Welcome in. Turn my volume up just a tad more here. Um, business before pleasure. What are the two cabins? Where do I make these two cabins at? Yeah, cabin production is there. Okay. This might not be the best thing that I want to do right now, but I need to check out what, what cabins are here. What's up? What's up, uh... General, welcome in, Rob. Good to see you. Maybe I won't start this yet. I don't know. Is this a, is this a stream I really want to start bringing bringing logs over? You finished the news? Oh, nice, man. Metal rolls, planks, and fuel. Okay. Copy that. Metal rolls, planks, and fuel. I'm gonna hook back up and then we'll start figuring this stuff out. Maybe I start cracking away at logs, maybe not, who knows. Okay. Uh, business, lost trailers. Could just get that step deck and do that right now. Let's do the step deck part, I guess. Do I have anything in the area? Yeah, I do. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll do this. I'll jump in that truck, bring this, bring my, my trailer back to the garage, drop it off. Swing down here. 
go grab this step deck, which is like right here-ish. And then we'll head back. Yeah, let's do that. Step three, ten, echo, if I can find him. Yo, cool, 101, welcome in. Thank you for the follow. Nice, so you finished all the new regions, except that expeditions thing, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Muffna, welcome in. Good to see you too as well. I have to say you ordered a gamepad. Which was just because someone said it's a complete new game if you play on a gamepad. So wait, what is a gamepad? Does that mean like a controller? Is that like... Is that what gamepad means in general? Like... So I'm taking it... I take it a gamepad is... Okay. That's what you call a controller? Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I literally play with PS4 controller in hand for this game, honestly. I, I, it's not, how do I say it? SnowRunner is not like a very complicated game where, how do I say this? You would, I think a keyboard and mouse would be warranted. I mean, I really feel that, yeah. Gamepad, AKA controller is, is the move. It, it just feels, it feels better. I mean, yeah, you can use a, uh, what's it called, a, a steering wheel, but I'm not necessarily like a, a steering wheel type of guy. Okay, let's go get this step deck. Leave this here. I think I get a free step deck, actually, from this mission, but I don't, I'm not probably not going to use it much. Yeah, keyboard mouse for winching, yeah. I use my I, so the thing is I really don't use my keyboard much at all. <clears throat> I use my I use my mouse for like stringing winch points, dropping um, waypoints in and stuff like that. That's really the only part I use from keyboard mouse. So I kind of integrate it both both of those features but kind of not. Yeah, the mouse for route planning is like very precise. I need to like, I need to repair myself, man. are a trap. Old school. I mean, the new thing today, oh, I need to repair so bad now. This is so bad. And I think I do, oh, that's right, the Azov. The Azov is gonna be my repair truck. That's right, okay, I'm gonna have to like, rendezvous with him pretty soon. I'll find out where he's at, actually. Maybe I can just do that now on my way back. Where's the Azov at? Oh, nice, yeah. So I can actually just... I'll bolt through here. And then rendezvous with him. Bring this trailer back. Good to go. Fuel repair. The Nostromo. 
Honestly, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I don't even know what... I know what a Thrustmaster is. That's basically a wheel. I don't know. For me, how do I say this? For me, a wheel... A wheel for me, it doesn't seem like something I would I would use, honestly. I guess for the, the immersion part of like just feeling... I guess, um... Feeling the game in like an immersive way. Yeah, I'm, I'm down d down with that, but... I honestly like I, I like to be able to like switch my cameras around, um, all that stuff. Yo, so I don't know. There it goes, right there. There it goes. That easy. Tank is gone. Suspension gone. Life gone. This is gonna be miserable now because I have no suspension. Yeah, you need first person for wheel for the, for the immersion part of it. Like if I was going to play wheel, I, I think after watching like Max Power and his setup, um, for me setting up a wheel here, like in front of this screen, like a 17 inch monitor right now, um, it wouldn't feel good. I'll just say that it wouldn't feel good at all. Like his his setups like go big or go home. Yeah, I think for like Euro Truck Sim and stuff like that, wheel is probably pretty nice, but like, I don't know. For me, I'm always trying to like switch camera angles, look at my vehicle's balance. So like all that stuff would be I think a little bit too saturating with the wheel. And then also, if I'm inside the cab, which, yes, it probably feels more immersive and stuff like that, but I would just feel... And I'm just dying with the fuel right now. Yeah, I don't know. Winch placements, yeah, all that stuff. I wouldn't be able to understand, like, where's my critical point of, like, tipping. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I wouldn't be able to see my tire placement very well. But... Things a low rider right now, man. Look how low this thing's riding. I am dying. My, I need repaired. Wow. Onward. Wheel is just for adding extra challenges harder and you still need a controller. Oh, really? I figured for like winch placements and stuff, you probably need to pick up your controller. I, I know, I know that Max Power told me that he still had to either use his controller or his mouse keyboard for certain things, even when we were playing co-op and he was on that crazy rig that he has. You tried it, but it hindered you more than helped you. I could see that. I think after playing, after playing just with the controller in hand, I don't know. Okay, nice. All right, let's continue here. SR on, on in VR? Oh my. Coffee's like perfect temperature right now. A little bit below, but it's it's all great. All good stuff. Um I'm gonna wait on wait on that one. I'll do these consumables though. Yeah, I'll do these consumables, why not? Taste of Tinsel Town. Yeah, I'll do this stuff. What is that? That's a ton of... Okay, let's go do it. Consumables. You know the good thing is? Is I don't have to have crazy amounts of... Uh, 
materials just to craft consumables like season nine, right? That was terrible. It's like, uh, <laughs> I just think back. I mean, it wasn't terrible. You didn't have to create a bunch of them, but like the, the materials that you had to, to gather just to create one consumable was just crazy. Oh yeah, the motion sickness. Think about like being in first person and then, you know, your head bobbing around like like you see when you actually like watch the driver after you're going through a bunch of like different areas and stuff. Uh, turn on generator. <laughs> you don't want to break a hit playing video games, right? Okay. Um Let's go craft consumables. What do you have here? Two, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people will be able to tolerate that. Honestly, I, I never I never got into like VR stuff. Like I I think even in school there was a there was a kid that he uh he would drive he would fly his FPV drone, which is basically like VR, right? Cuz like first person view and and he would he, the, there was a couple days he asked me he's like you want to come fly it and I'm like dude it, it just didn't really like I didn't feel like it was something I wanted to do, I guess. Like it didn't seem fun to me, like flying a drone first person. It's just weird. I'm, it feels like you're always heads down. You know what I'm saying? I have to be able to, to like pop up, check other things. Uh, I guess we just roll through there. Speed through. That's it. How is Crane on controller? I think it's easy. I think it's pretty easy. Yeah, I think it's pretty easy. It's like anything, man. You just got to get used to it. But I think if you get controller, if you get a controller, I would definitely do can, can what's it called uh, config B. Config B is like my go to. But I mean, any any of the configs are pretty decent, though. What's up, TV? Welcome in. Use a mouse keyboard for crane work. That's actually another option as well. You can use mouse keyboard for that. I don't know. I, I just got used to using um, the controller. So you use config D. I don't know what the difference between D and B is right now. I actually had to check. No, do not use my mouse to grab this. But I mean, how do I say this? If I can do this stuff, anyone can. Like I'm not a, I'm definitely not like a, a super gamer. Honestly, I'm probably what more people would probably call like a boomer. That's like the new, that's the new buzzword now on Twitch that everyone, or young people, they call, that's the new thing, is uh, they call people boomers. Yo, what's up, Irradiated? Welcome in. The only thing on controller I don't like is the winch. Very annoying when you, when you're near winch points. Okay, so that's the thing. So here's the, here's what happens is, the, the thing with the winch is it's directional. Okay, so like whenever you see me fire a winch, it's based upon the centroid. It's basically looking from the center of your um, your cab. So whichever way your your camera's facing, it'll fire the winch. It'll prioritize the the winch to fire that way, right? So like that's when like you do quick winches. Like usually like to catch yourself, you spin your camera to the side, dip down, and then you basically spam the winch, right? So it is the most how do I say this accurate when you're in first person, like. Boom, like that, right? Or 
See if I can grab the other tree. Okay, did, I don't know why it's not it's not prioritizing the actual tree in front of me, but but yeah, that's basically it. So like you see, if there's nothing to my side, it's gonna fire at the closest one. That's literally what it's gonna do. If you're if you're not if there's no winch in line. So that's the thing with the quick winch. So like whenever I go to like if I'm too lazy and I don't want to to get my mouse out to like directional, I'll just dip my camera, force it that way, and then I'll just grab something like that, and then I'll just pull. So a lot of the times, like before you see me fire a winch, I'll dip my camera because I, I how do I say this? Because if you're if you're up like this, it it's not really saying okay, this is the direction I want you to fire it, right? But like when I dip it and I push it toward that area, it's more precise. Not as precise as first person, but. but that's kind of a way to to be a little bit more precise with your winch, especially when, yeah, you don't want to do the whole thing where you have to pan through the, the features or bust out the mouse to, to grab something. To be honest, I probably should have made videos on directional winching. I mean, but the thing is, it's 2024. The game's four years old. I don't I don't think many people are going to really um, find a whole lot of use to it. It's pretty much only like newer players. At this point, pretty much everyone kind of understands that. But I don't know if there's a lot of people that understand the, the, the like directional winching, I guess. See, like right here. So, like, if I want to winch that tree, there it is. So, and I'll go like this. Do you see how my camera? See, like, I'm I'm still facing forward, but it's not precise. So it fired off here, at the closest target, right? So, but you see, I dipped down and it fired out straight ahead. Now, if I go this way, fires out there. If I go this way, fires there. This way, fires there. Now let's be more precise. There you go. It's firing there. So it's basically, it's just all based on um, your camera position, positioning, essentially. I was your freshman year teacher in SR. Oh my gosh. Four years old, man. Dude, you're a senior now? But yeah, the centroid, I believe, originates out of the cab. So it's highly dependent on, on your camera position. You know what I need to do here? I need to get the W990 out. I feel like this would be a good area for the W990 right now, the Kenworth. You started watching it about a year after it came out? Yeah, that's about the time I started. Rob, you might be one of the longest standing viewers I have, actually. To be honest, man, I think you might be up there. I think you started watching me when I had like a hundred subscribers or something like that. Um, I know there was there was a couple guys that I don't know if they watch me anymore, but yeah, I think Rob has definitely been he's been like one of the OGs. Yeah, the W990 is a DLC. Yeah, it's a standalone DLC. I'm the author of The Art of Snow Running. <laughs> oh my goodness. This game, man. I can't believe it's been so long I haven't really talked about, about winching like that. 
Yeah, you, you did find me way back. You didn't even know you were? You're streaming, or otherwise I'd be the first one? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I streamed, like, it was, like, spotty, right? Because, like, honestly, like, when I first started streaming, probably for, like, the first two years, this is going to be really crazy to say, is actually, I was mostly streaming to no one. Um, it was a long time before I even had, like, five people in the chat. And even then, like, five people, you know, they don't talk. <laughs> so, or they don't ask questions. But the thing is, it's like, yeah, so essentially I just started to treat um, the stream as like a podcast. Honestly, that's kind of how, that's literally how my streams are. They're, they're just kind of like podcasts where I'll just talk about random things or talk about the game. Oh, I probably should have went around here. I guess I still can. I don't want to go through that stuff. How many did you have at season three hard mode? Wait, what do you mean? Oh, I don't even know. Season three hard mode? Probably not many. Honestly, probably not many. I think I probably had... Streaming has been tough, man, to be honest. Like, it's a, it's a tough go. But I couldn't tell you. Probably not much for Season 3 hard mode. Probably not much. I honestly, I didn't stream... I, I would stream like once or twice a week though. And it wasn't like 0 to 100%. Actually, for Season 3 hard mode, I probably had... That was actually relatively recent. So I've kind of, I've kind of jammed through all these pretty quick. So, to be honest, there were probably like 20. I probably had like a viewership of like 20 at that point. You were looking to get spin tires, you can't get it anymore? Yeah, it's kind of sad because the whole legal thing. You were watching my videos and you saw me live streaming one day? Yo, Rob, I, I remember that. I literally remember when I was live streaming and you came in, you're like, hey man, I, I literally just saw one of your videos. It was April 21st, yeah, I started creating videos. My first video was in like March, very early March. It was the Fleet Star review, actually, no. Actually, no, it wasn't. I did. I, I put out videos on my challenge playthrough. I had my challenge run. So I think the challenge run was in like February or January of 2021. And then I started creating truck reviews after my game got deleted from season two. You were hooked by the truck reviews at first. Yeah. I'm glad you I'm glad you've been liking them, Rob. I've tried to improve them slowly. I think the only other improvement I think I'm gonna add to them is I'm going to Let me ask you guys this. Should I should I stop announcing each upside and downside respectively? Like should I just not have them not announce the downside and just basically have it pop up and then just immediately start talking about it. Because you just got the game, it was really helpful. Yeah, that's that literally was the aim. That was exactly what I, what I was trying to intend to happen is just to help folks. So that's super good to know. Thanks for all your help. Are you sure you don't want to raise a glass with us? No, sir. I have to drive. What really caught your attention was how you flew over the terrain in in reviews. I never realized that this was possible. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> Flying over the terrain? Like, you mean just like fast paced pushing? You vote yes? Honestly, I think that might be the only thing, Victor, that I, I think, uh, looking back, yeah, I think I might stop. I might stop doing that. But the thing is, is like, <laughs> I'm 
70, it's going to be 70 reviews, I think. I think I have 70 reviews out right now. 70 videos that are in that review category. And everyone has had that format. So I wonder if people are going to be like, how do I say this? There was folks that told me about the, so first thing I dropped was the intro. I used to have like a video intro of like my face, right? And that was the first thing I actually dropped out of doing. Um, I took, I think it was my first video of not doing that was the Ford F750 or it was the Tatra Phoenix. And then, uh, yeah, at the beginning, my flying over terrain was what baffled you in your truck review. Re Wait, which, which videos like you guys, was I really going that fast over the, over stuff? My Western Star 49 X review, you flew over the trail in Alaska. And if I did that, I'd never be that fast. All of them, you were struggling in mud and I was flying. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. So that is a tactic guys. So that's a tactic I use because how do I say this? Like when you, when you watch a review of someone playing SnowRunner. SnowRunner is kind of a, a slower paced game, right? I think we all can agree. It's not like quick pace, like boom, boom, boom. Um, it's more or less like slow. Where's that one trailer at? Okay, never mind. It's kind of slow paced. So like what I what I do is, even though I do, how do I say this? Sometimes I'll, I'll have like a recording with like a slower gearbox. If I'm going to go through something really deep or if I know I'm gonna, I know I can get through it pretty quick, high range gearbox just to kind of have some excitement, I guess. If that makes sense. So it's kind of to hold the player or the, hold the uh, the viewer's attention a little bit. So it's kind of a it's kind of a thing. Movie trailer. You know what we're going to do? I'm going to get this movie trailer real quick. The only time that you fly that fast is when I was in a modded, modded switch and I flew through the mud in Northport because it broke. That's funny. But that's cool, man. I, I never knew that like folks like that or they, they, they thought that's kind of like why um, that drew them to the channel. Fast pace moving. I never would have thought. All right. Uh, do I do I want to put on the high range gearbox? I kind of do. I'm going to put the high range on. I'm going to put the high range on. Let's do it. Oh yeah, that's true. I used the Ford on my first, on my normal mode playthrough actually, Rob. That was literally what I used for this on the last one. But I'm actually gonna switch over to, to this real quick to, uh, basically because I, I wanna actually use this truck for other things. But yeah, no, I, that's a good truck though. Simply because you only could go slow and you wanted to change that. Okay, let's not just crash myself here. Nope. You know, I forget when I when I first understood that you could just press high gear and then uh, if you had enough juice, you could basically just rip to a certain point. I honestly forget whenever I figured that out. At first, like high gear with a slower gearbox, I was like, to me, 
as like driving a stick shift car to me i just thought high gear was like fourth or or like third gear i was like okay it's just like slam pushing it in third gear and then just letting the the rpms like run up and stay up that's kind of like what i thought it was i'm just gonna stay in high gear right now i don't feel like just floating down this highway and just slamming myself and with the crane you can feel the the, the sway on this truck though some days you go slow so other days a need for speed yeah yeah kind of like over yeah i guess like overdrive yeah you thought your eyes were deceiving you when you saw my channel live really you know i got a comment actually um by a viewer wait where where does where's that at i think i probably should have went the other way I forget where this goes. Where that? Oh. Oh, I know where this goes. Okay, yeah, I just follow the road. And then I think I, I cut over at some point, actually. Is it here? Yeah, it is here. I actually got a, uh, <laughs> a comment the other day, and the guy was like, How are you going so fast? Did you see? <laughs> okay, well, that's that. <laughs> Yo, you don't even know. He used to have to explain every stream. Really? So get all stupid up in here. Oh my goodness, man! All right. That means I got to go all the way back. Do I have a truck in like general area? I have the burlac. I can go do. Yeah, I'll just go get the burlac over there. Yeah. That was a pretty good bounce, right? That was not professional. All right, you know what? Tag, stock, stock, stock. Guess I'll put the autonomous on. Why not? Because I need it. Snorkel. I don't really need it. Um, I guess I'm going to put the light hitch on, right? Trunk repair supplies. And then we'll cook. I'll go flip him over. This is triple A for sure. Oh, dude, I didn't even repair myself. Whatever. It's not going to take a lot of damage. Whoa, did he just like endo? Uh, refuel. Wow, dude. I'm about to run out of fuel in the Kenworth already. A snow. Oh, uh, no. There we go. Okay. So let's go flip him. But yeah, I got a comment and they were like, how are you going so fast? Like he's like genuinely, I want to know. And I was like, ah, it's, I forget what, what it was on. I think it was just on like a stream or something. And I'm pretty sure I only really use the off-road gearbox a lot. So it was kind of, it's kind of funny. I honestly like to be to be quite fair to be honest I I really thought that uh folks would probably just make fun of me because I, I use like an off-road gearbox more than anything and I kind of go slower than most people so yeah I that's what I always kind of thought is because I'm more of a slow pace type guy but The burlac is the burlac. It's 
Snorlax. Honestly, like, he is like Snorlax. Snorlax, right? Dude, you're breaking out the, the Pokemon terms? The Pokemon names now? Wow. Wait, if, if, if you know, like, Pokemon stuff, are you considered, like, a boomer? Is that, like, what the cool kids talk about nowadays? It's true, it isn't. It's about... It is pretty chill. It's supposed to be chill. I think I've gotten to a couple disagreements with people on Discord about... About, like, just high-range gearbox versus off-road gearbox, essentially. And I don't know. In my opinion, I feel like the game is, is tailored more toward, like, a slower, chill, grind it out. And I think the high range is more for, like, the fast-paced people, which is, which is totally okay, but... I don't know. I think there's two... There's, there's, uh, there's good arguments for both. <laughs> you must be growing stalagmites. So wait, stalagmites are the ones that come up from the ground, right? Stalag sites are the ones that come down, or is it stalag sites? Yeah, I forget which one is which. I like how these lights shine out. Speedy Azov, the Speedy Azov, not the Sprinter, had the same time that one contest in Michigan by the farm with the off-road box as its brother, but it consumed way more fuel. But with the high range, it went faster and consumed way less fuel, says Mr. Lone Wolf. I mean, we can test it. We can test it. I'm, 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 I'm down to test it. All right, let's go. Got some anti-aliasing. Let's see, do I have anti-aliasing? Oh, I'll put TAA on, but actually no, not TAA, that's too soft. Usually I don't put that stuff on Cudlac because when I'm streaming, it's a lot of work for the CPU and GPU to encode. It's a lot. So I usually, I usually don't, but I will for you, buddy. Yeah. I mean, if anybody wants to, you know, spend five grand to buy me a, a sick streaming PC, like I'll run max settings, man. I mean, I'm down for that but I'm a budget guy. You're laggy now? Really? Give me a second. Let's see if it's, if it's kicking it out. Is it really? Is it laggy right now for you guys too? Or what's going on? I mean, we can do some testing on the Azov. I mean, how do I say this? The so the argument of looks fine to you. Okay, it might be you. Okay. Um, so the argument of how do I say this? It's it's the argument is range, like range overall with the tank of gas versus consumption. Like straight up consumption numbers, like what you're looking at at the gate on the gauge. That that that's two two places of arguments, actually. Um, yeah, it is this way. I should have went through the other gateway. It's literally highway on the other gateway, and I just chose to go this way. Man, this crane is killing me with this. The 
train is killing me right now. Source is seven. Yeah, I put it up to, let's see. I have it at 7,500. I have it at the 7,500 right now. I can always drop it, but when you push more bitrate, it captures more of the actual high frames. What's up, eye drops? Welcome in. Oh no, did I go the wrong way? Where's my, where's my side to get across? Is it over here? Where's my crossing point? Oh, I knew I should have went through the other gateway. I knew I should have went through the other gateway. It's north. It's north. The wife to start to start downloading a game. Ooh, that's not good. What's up, eye drops? Welcome in, man. What do I, what do you need? I don't know if I have the expertise for you, but uh, I can try. Yeah, they definitely made these rivers harder to cross, especially in like season twelve. Okay, so I guess I'll just cruise this way. See, this is why I think I put the offered gearbox on this because. Punching through here without a trailer is like, you can see I'm just catching myself nonstop. Okay, let me see here. Let me check this out. Normally, trucks who activate their suspension lose a ton of pulling power. But the Mac Defense, I always activate the raised. What do you mean? I never have, have experienced that, actually. So that, that is kind of news to me. So with the Mac defense, I'm pretty sure it is its balance is superb. So I would leave its race suspension in the up in the up position pretty much the whole time, actually. What's up, Velocity? Welcome in. But yeah, I, I've never actually experienced that type of uh, that performance bug or, or that performance issue you're talking about. That's a free, free flatbed, which I think I'm just going to delete it here at some point. Stream looks and sounds good on your end. Thanks, Trumpet. Appreciate it, man. It should sound better because I have my sound, not my soundproofing panels, but I have uh, like a, those little foam panels behind my, behind my computer now. So I don't get the echoing that I was getting. So hopefully that sounds better. Oh, like the active and the dead wheel. Yeah, honestly, man, I don't use Okay, so like activating the dead axle. Okay, so like I never activate the dead axle. I don't think there's any, to be honest, like I know I'm probably gonna get comments and people say like, oh, well, you well, actually streamer or actually Mr. Man on the on the telephone talking, uh, there actually is this. But, but the problem, the thing is, is my, how do I say this? My argument to that of you know, it could you know help you gain balance um, in some areas or lessen up the pressure you're setting down on icy areas and stuff like that. Um, I'm going to say that I would rather have my drive axles having more weight pressed into them than having a dead axle sit down. Yeah, you want, I think if, like, say for this truck here, um, I can kind of show you a little something here. Let me see if I can find a, a little good area. Yeah, I can find it right here. This is a perfect area. I can't show you with, with daylight, 
But here, I'm going to show you something with the Kenworth. And I talked about this in the review as well. I'll do this before I... Okay, so, check this out. Dead Axle. It's pressed down. You see how it just bumped itself up. Now... Watch this. Look at my wheels. See that? Wheels are not touching at all. You see how rigid that, that dead axle is? Look at that. I can't even get my drive wheels on the ground. That's why th this dead axle and this truck is probably the worst of them all. Now look. Good to go. So this truck here, its dead axle is super rigid, okay? Other trucks, not so much. So that's that's kind of like I, I just say, like in general, just don't put your dead axle down and yeah. You're doing some Ontario with, with other mods, nice. I mean, there's people that swear by the dead axle and it, and it you know, it, it has beneficial effects and that's great. I'm, I'm glad you use them. But for me personally, um, yeah, I've played this game a lot and I have never really said to myself, I need to put my dead axle down here or I'm going to be in trouble. So, yeah, it's just uh, if you find it useful, it's great. But for me, not really. I feel like I'm pulling a camper. Well, it actually, it is a camper. <laughs> Basically. I actually wonder how much this thing is. How much this thing actually weighs. Yeah, I think you want you want your weights from your load on your drive axles. Especially for trucks like this, I don't don't have all-wheel drive. Like I don't have any drive axles up front, so I, I have to I have to rely on keeping my main weight that I'm hauling, or as much weight as I can, on my drive axles for for grip. And it, it's even more so. I, I even need to concentrate on it even more so because these tires now have like P five twelve grip codes. So, if you've driven the P512, it's kind of the same same concept. A way bridge would be a cool concept. Why? I need to take off anti-aliasing. This is a, uh, I can, I can immediately tell, like I just, it's causing my game to stutter or to freeze up kind of, so. Just need a better PC, man. Just need a better PC. A way bridge would be a cool mod. Well, what's a way bridge? You don't mind me asking. All right, let's drop this off. Yeah, this is the gateway I need to go through pretty much all the time. It's a toss up. I'm going to say overall, it's not really needed for any of them. And I don't think I think a lot of folks complain about them a lot. And, and the thing is, like, I don't see I don't see how like dead axle trucks are are like so bad that you have to stay away from them. I mean, I remember, how do I say this? I remember being in Wisconsin, okay? And uh, I think it was actually hard mode. And I was actually up in like Black Badger Lake uh, delivering logs. I think, I wish I could go back to the stream. I think I still have the stream somewhere. And someone comes in and they're like, why in the world are you, are you using a dead axle truck? And I was like, why not? And they're like, well, it's horrible. And I was like, uh, okay. Not really, but it just, that's a thing, man, is P512 
people see a non-drivable axle and they automatically think, oh, this is a death trap, and it's really not. Actually, get back on the cement here. This truck has so much power, dude. Unreal. Press, baby. Oh. I actually might put on the other gearbox. in eighth gear just cooking right now sliding like crazy that's how you know this thing has a lot of power and I'm actually like blipping the throttle oh this is where that trailer is nice oh that's good that's good news all right cool get that later that's right that's a free one pretty sure like it, I might just hook that up to another truck. Nice. Here comes the slides, some wheat. Used the fine tune and it wasn't half bad? Yeah. Yeah, the fine tune wouldn't be bad either. Without the penalty, I mean, I think the the overall consumption is is just a tad higher, right? But all right, we're gonna do something now. We'll do a quick test here. Logging on the Paystar in Ontario. Logging mod map. What color should I do? Green, blue, white, stripe, gray. I'm not sure, man. That's totally your call. All right, I'm gonna pull out the Azov 5319. We'll do some trailblazing. And then, uh, yeah. I don't like, I don't like this. What's it called? This, uh, this contest, but. Cause there's a strat to it and I don't want to do the strat. <laughs> I know the strat people do with a twin steer. That I'm not I'm not keen on it. But I'll just do the same one. Let's go like this. Black River. Where's where's the blazer himself? Blazer. Cyborg bed. Yeah, it's already on. Okay, so the only way that you could potentially... Whoa, boy. What's up, Xanath? Welcome in. So what I'm thinking is here... Here's what I, I think I'm going to do to make everything consistent, okay? Because with the high range gearbox, I'm literally going to just throw it in high and I'm going to let it go. So for testing purposes, I'll probably just, I'll just run high the whole time through this, okay? Same thing with the off-road gearbox. I'm just going to set it in high. It's going to be a lot slower, but just for the sake of having both tests be consistent. And, and then, you know, there's no variance of when I'm, shifting gears in different ways and stuff like that and different parts and consumption values varying and, and that's that way so we're just going to do standard straight up so i think i think it's just two of these right and it goes to the farm where does it go it goes here right 
Is it pine food delivery? Where does this go? I forget where this actually goes. I think I know I go up this trail this way down here over. It goes to the oil rig. So, okay, right here. All right, cool. Let's go. All right, so high range punch and then I'll just let it sit. Okay, 49 gallons start with. Okay, so 49 started with 49. So you have to probably keep in keep in uh, mind that while we are burning a lot of fuel, we are traveling at faster speeds, covering more distance. So, and then we'll talk about a little bit about this when we're done. The strat is you can literally just dive down in there and just go right up. However, I'm just going to go around. I'm not really. I don't really care about breaking any records. Not not really concerning me. You find some trucks and H with the high range is around the same speed as the off-road top gear. But you get more torque or something. Yeah, your torque is going to be much higher with high gear though. Just because high gear gives you that 25%, right? Never use this guy in Michigan, it looks fun. Yeah, this is literally what it would look like. This is a little thick spot right here and just punches through. We, we do have pretty much the best tires you could put on this thing just for raw performance. You hate the gear searching. Uh, I'm just actually just going to go jump over here go like this. We'll do the same thing with the other gearbox. to the right here so I don't smash myself. Yep. 41. So far we used almost 10 gallons so far. Give you a honk when you drive past your house? You got it. Thirty-eight. Okay. Alright, cool. Use the Azov 5 when you join randos. Okay, so it used... What do we, we start at? We started at 49. We started at 49. We used 38. So what was that? 11. Right? Is that check? Going faster equals damage. Fixing truck. Lose money at the time. Yeah, that's true. 11 and 21. Okay, thank you, Contagious. Okay, cool. All right, so after we do this test, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show you, or I'll, I'll talk about the two, the two reasonings behind both gearboxes. No, I will not make another gearbox video, or or anything like that. But we'll just talk some two different viewpoints of why one would use one gearbox over the other. No, no more gearbox videos, please. All right. Okay, we're at 49. Okay, we started the same one. I'm just going to, I'm going to keep it high the whole time. I'm not going to switch out. I'm not going to switch out of gear at any point. We're just going to run high the whole way. The whole way. I'm probably going to say right now that the high range gearbox is probably going to be used less just because the pace that I was pushing opposed to this is just much faster. Covering more distance. You only use high range or highway gearbox whenever uh, you have always on diff lock. Yeah, or a good time to use is when you don't have any diff lock at all. 
That's another good time, actually. Yeah, I think this is the spot that's going to kill me right here. You don't like how they screwed up with the high range, the high gear and the advanced special? So they, they've actually, they changed it. Well, they, they fixed it a little bit, but it's still not optimal. It, it, it's a lot better than it used to be, Rob. Um, but it, it's definitely not optimal. Or it's not crazy good, I guess. Or crazy fast. No, it's not. I mean, literally, like, if you put... Oh, I didn't even reset the textures as well, so... Yikes. Or I didn't reset the, uh, the map as well. That kind of sucks. Okay, up over top, the little... The little bing bong here. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, it's pretty much going to be that around the same, probably. I'm guessing this is going to be around the same. I mean, if you compare the 612's gearbox to, like, the, the 605R in high gear, they're nothing like each other. They're nothing like each other. Okay, well, this gearbox wins. There you go. Wins by a hair. Hey, look, I made money. <laughs> so, yeah. There you go. Okay, so here, here's my reasoning of this. I talked about this in a, vi in a small video. So, if you want, I can pull out some... Uh, I can pull out some... How to say Some charts. To kind of give people a visual. But here, here's the thing is this. While you might be able to run a high range gearbox and get things done faster and potentially potentially have better fuel consumption. I, th I think I'm going to say potentially. Okay. Um, you are going to take elevated parts of damage. Another thing is when you're stuck, I think... I would rather have lower gears, I guess. So that's kind of like my only thing. Um, okay, so let's let's start hacking away at this stuff, man. I need to start doing something here. Concrete slabs, where are the slabs at? Wait, th no, they're not up there. Okay, the slabs are here? No? No? Oh, they're here. Cool, got it. Okay. Makes sense. Let's do it. Mastodon is probably twice as heavy and longer than what truck? Oh, there it is. That's my... Go get some slabs, some beams. 
Don't worry about that tree. <laughs> All right, four slabs first. Okay, so another thing I actually want to say is is about the high range gearbox is that why I think it, it burns its values are always higher, okay? Is the values seem higher at a given moment, like when you're looking down at your gauge, you can see the high range gearbox there there was no uh, probably like very few parts where the, the off-road gearbox was effectively pulling more gas than the high range, okay? And here's the reason why. And I talked about this in, in a very short video on my on my channel. I think it's due to the fact that the high range gearbox is in its high gear setting. While it is a higher, uh, while it is a higher angular velocity, aka wheel speed, that constant speed it's always trying to hit that. Okay, so it's using all of its resources or power to keep that constant speed. Okay, so that's why when you're hitting terrain that those numbers are elevating because the engine is legitimately trying to, it's it's getting hit with resistance and it's trying to get back to that constant speed. So it's always trying to chase that constant speed that's set higher, right? Because the high range gearbox has a higher angular velocity than an off-road gearbox. So the off-road gearbox doesn't have to work as hard to get to that angular velocity, right? So that's the reason why I think the uh, the high range gearbox just pulls more fuel um, at a given moment, if that makes sense. But I can tell you this, if this truck had all wheel drive, this thing would be so crazy with gas guzzling. Oh, using the, the high range in the Mastodon? Could you imagine? That would be insane. I think it would kind of make the game even more ridiculous. <laughs> I mean... How do I say this, man? Like even even the special gearbox on the Mastodon is actually really good. I mean, in, in its final gear, it retains like 75% of its torque. So there is, and, and its final gear in the special gearbox is actually as fast. Its angular velocity is as fast as a normal advanced special. Per the, like per the numbers. which is a really cool thing. It's it's advanced special gearbox has some of the highest um, starting torque values in, in like a low gear setting than any than basically any other truck in the game, which is pretty sweet too as well. So like, yeah, they, they kind of scuffed its it's uh, it's high gear, I guess. But I mean, in other ways, it, it's kind of set up pretty well. I need to probably get myself out of the way here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I can understand that. I didn't see the expedition patch notes, no. I haven't really been paying attention to that stuff. I gotta block it out, to be quite honest. But I'm I guess I'm interested to hear about it. So what's up, Joe? Let me give me the give me the info. As Dr. Evil would say. gotta love the American crane you gotta love it oh man you gotta love it okay, 
Can I get you to spin out here? Yes. Yes. You try to watch some expedition stuff, but I guess I just like the big, heavy, loaded down trucks where no man has gone before. Yeah. I... <sighs> Rob, I am in agreement, my man. It's, I think that's legitimately why like, I kind of quit playing it. It's just it wasn't it wasn't for me, I guess, which is it's OK, I guess. No. What are you doing? Bug fixes, UI improvements, and gameplay fixes. They listen to some complaints and fix. Really? Maybe I will fire up the game and just take a look at what they did. Any any notable fixes? I heard they have a, um, a, a photo mode now. They put guns on the front, right? Yeah. There's two more patches. Wow, dude. This thing just tapped five, five gallons per minute. Yeah, I heard they are going to be pushing out some patches. Yikes. Yeah, kind of hard to see, yeah. It's no SR for sure, but you're warming up to it? That's good. That's good. Comment from players was taken into account when the map was not centered on the place where the player was to deploy. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I kind of noticed. Even when I was like, I bring up the map at any point, I'd have to like zoom over to where my truck was. It didn't like, like here, like if I if I go like this, like it centers right on my my like where my current location is, right? And then I have to like orient myself based upon, like whenever you, I think that's what you're talking about, right? Does it sometimes though? Okay. Yeah, Loadmaster Nate at it again. That's right. Yes, sir. The issue of player confusion when deploying from a far quest point. The camera will center on the car. That is a good improvement. That's a good improvement, man. So yeah, I've been kind of keeping track on the like Steam reviews. I guess I haven't been like looking at them all, but it's kind of crazy that they fell from 58% um, positive votes on Steam reviews to 54 in a day's time. Um, like release day, I think it was like 54% or maybe it was the day after. And then like, I think the, the ensuing day it was... 54, which is like a 4% drop. 58 to 54, and then now it's 53. So, I mean, it's... How do I say this, man? They have to do something. <laughs> so that's good they're doing something. I probably could have went through the through the mud here and not have, have to go around, but whatever. never saw this type of loading technique oh man this is uh we, we do a lot of this stuff a lot of this stuff
D button in the tire inflation system screen can be clicked by left bumper. Ooh. Left. I guess left middle. Okay. So I'm gonna have to look at this. I might have to I might have to fire up expeditions here and just take a quick look. Just to kind of like set my eyes on it so I can understand a little bit better. As we'll see first person. Check it out. I can still see. Not great, but it's there. Mother of sun visors, that's right. <laughs> it's so much easier to do this with uh, with a cab over, man. St overstacking is just it's such it's such a more pleasurable experience with the cab over. I think it's gonna fall. Actually, hold up, I need to do something. Of course it was. I wanted to grab the underneath one so I can just pin them both, but yeah. Because I kind of messed up. But it's fine. Here's what I'll do, though. Oh, no. Stay, stay out, anchors. So yeah, I grab the bottom one, pin the top, and then you roll. That's better. I can't see a... nope. Okay, up to Orst's... Orstoke? Orstock? Oh gosh. I know I'm gonna have people. This is the jungle packing right here. Actually, do I have metal rolls? I wonder how many metal rolls I have in that in that place right there. I'll get gas when I come back down. Uh Bed can carry another 20 cargo. Uh, let's see. Let's go this way. I guess. Dude, I'm so top heavy right now. It's unreal. I probably should have got a gas, but I have a roof rack, so we're fine. See, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, here, here's a problem with with not having all-wheel drive like this. Like, yeah, I have great, I have great tire codes, but I feel like if I had an all-wheel drive truck there, like the step, I probably would have went through that faster, just because of all-wheel drive. Like, with with the combo. Oh, I can't get high gear right now. That's interesting. No, I can. Probably should have just went the other way. <laughs> Across the bridge and then straight up is probably a faster route, but whatever.
Wow, dude, this is actually a heavy load. I can't punch high and stay high. Look, wow. That's wild. Okay, so here's the thing. They said that the Azov, the Atom, is going to come out, I think, either late. I think late this month, early. Is it early next month? I don't know. So I don't. I think we might buy it on this playthrough. Just to, like. Because, yeah, I don't have any other playthroughs to kind of, like, press the mission with it. Come on, just give me, can I get high? Let's see if I can punch it. No, I can't, oh my. It's a pretty steep hill though. Yeah, I, I know that. Can I double it? Let's see if I can double it. Hold on, wait. Ready for the double? Can I get a double here? Can I get a double? No, 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 no. Don't fall. Almost. Ah. Uh. serious that I could do it like I do uh, metal beams but I guess not nope yeah Pog does make some good trailers so does uh, Olsum but yeah I don't use them not on this playthrough anyways just because uh yeah. I would have so many people come in and say, well, this is not a legitimate playthrough because, Mr. Streamer, you uh, use modded trailers. So, yeah. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I, I get I get comments that I'm that I'm cheating anyways because uh, <laughs> I overstack. But honestly, man, on the randomizer, I use the awesome trailer pack a lot. A little bit of pogroms, not much. But that that was legit. That was legit. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Slow down. You saw a video of a humanitarian aid being dropped over Gaza and it came out. What in the world is going on here? Can I just get up this hill? Wow. Then it came out as a blob of tangled parachutes. So what uh what air what airdrop system? So was it from a, like a C seventeen? I'm guessing it probably was a C seventeen. It was disappointing, really. It was a big one. So if it was if it was a US plane, I think the, the biggest jet we have that airdrops currently is the C-17. I don't think uh, the C-5 can airdrop. Two metal rolls. I'm not, I'm not gonna get them here. I'll just go craft them. Let's go craft them real quick. So yeah, if it was a C-17, it 
basically like the de the delivery the, the delivery system is called the ADS the air airdrop delivery system. So that's like they can push like eleven pallets or uh, rolling stock or personnel and um, out of out of the jet, and then it basically deploys the the drogue chute comes out, and then those basically pull out the cargo from the delivery system. It's hard to explain. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it just because I wasn't airdrop certified, but I, I kind of understand a little bit about it um, because I used the same system to, to load cargo for air land missions. But yeah, it's, it's kind of incredible to be honest, but that's kind of crazy that happened. I wonder how, I wonder how that happened. It's very unfortunate. But honestly, I don't know if it was a U.S. jet. I don't know if the United States is airdropping over there right now. Oh, missed it. Whatever, mind. Next one. Looked like the Titan from GTA. Dude, I don't even know. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, it's pretty it's pretty risky because so because essentially like you're like in flight, you're opening up the back door, right? And that's inherently like causing a lot of drag. And so then also like when you have a drogue chute come out the back, that's also causing an immense amount of, of drag to the uh to the jet so also like if here's another thing is like if you have cargo going out the ads system which are basically on rollers right if they're coming down the rollers and somehow that cargo gets jammed in any way going out that jet because like they have to basically tilt up right to like help escalate like getting the or to help jettison the cargo essentially it's basically what it is it's like a jettison but you're you're essentially yeah, you're, it's being pulled out by a drogue chute. And then you have like the actual chutes that I think deploy as it's coming out, right? Or I think it's after it's out. I, I forget. Anyways, yeah, it can be pretty bad because if you have something that was set in a position prior to um, prior to actually like jettisoning the, jettisoning, jettisoning the cargo, aka airdropping the cargo, if it gets jammed in a place that's very far aft, yeah, you could have a, a pretty bad situation for controllability of the aircraft. So, yeah. Okay, that's not... I gotta do this. Yeah, basically, like, you're... Because what would happen is... Yeah, you have, like, a CG envelope, right? Where there's, like, a center of gravity. One. Oh wait. I don't have enough fuel. What? Oh, oh! I have to make more beams. That's right. Okay. There we go. Yeah, CG issues can get, can be pretty nasty. Yeah. So like any type of like a forward CG. Like a more forward CG gives you gives you more controllability. Like if you're within the envelope, I think I forget what the percentage is. It's like a thirty, a thirty-two, or it might be a thirty-one. It's where the C-17 starts at, and I think it gets up to like a forty, forty something. I forget what it was, but I would always try to balance it around like a thirty-six to thirty-seven, um, because that's like enough where you have good controllability but enough where you're because like when you have a, a little bit farther aft um cg you're actually getting better economy i guess or just yeah you're just more efficient to flying through the air with a with a little bit of an aft cg well that's what the pilots told me anyways so but i've had cgs that were like a tad over 40 at you know what i'm saying but that's pretty aft, but it's not like crazy. Let 
But yeah, essentially like load shift can really harm harm a jet pretty bad. Yikes. Come on, baby. Do I know a C5 galaxy? Yeah, I, I know what that plane is. It's it's massive, my man. It is a huge aircraft. That is a massive aircraft. Massive aircraft. Sits on the tail. Tail and guides. Wait, what do you mean? There's both of them do that, actually. You talking about in flight or out of flight? Oh, that's right. That is right. Yeah, yeah. So that's another thing. The cargo compartment in the C5 here, I can show you. Here, let's talk about this. This is kind of funny. C5 config. Galaxy. Images. Okay, let's talk about this. This is kind of this is kind of funny display. Okay, so the C5 Galaxy, and the crazy thing is like whenever you watch this thing fly. No joke, it 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 looks like it should not be in the air. No, I'm not kidding. People call this like the C5 cruise. Um, they call this thing. Th this crash was crazy, by the way. The C5 crash. Um, I, I definitely know about that one. Um, people call this. What is it? Ah, <sighs> oh, what was it, man? There's like a running joke with air with like air crew because every time this thing would land, something would break. Not me, not, I don't mean like hardware, like, or like things, how do I say it's like things that are like crippling, like that would cause people to die, but just something, there'd be something goes wrong to where they would actually ground some of these aircraft after landing. Okay. Because they just had to do maintenance on them. So what would happen is these flight crews, they would fly somewhere. Like, let's say they would fly from like here to Germany. They'd land in Germany and then they would just break. So the crew, they get all that time off because when you're broke, you don't have to, you don't have to press the mission because you're broke, right? So your mission gets extended. You're getting paid. You're getting paid to uh, per diem every day, which in Germany at time is like over a hundred dollars a day. Okay. Now it's probably a lot more so that they would just, it's like, if you were a loadmaster, which I think on this jet, there's like four loadmasters. I think you would have three or four at a time. So like the, the nose opens up. But anyway, in the back of the cargo compartment, how do I say this? I'll look at this. So back here in the top part of this, this aircraft, this is actually where the seating is for, for passengers. And you're facing backwards, I believe. 
which is kind of a crazy thing. Up here, behind the cockpit, there's like a huge like crew area. Like there's like huge crew bunks and stuff like that. Like it's pretty massive. This jet is massive, man. It's crazy. But yeah, it, it's not a tactical mo mo mover. It's the C-17 is pretty tactical and it's pretty, uh, pretty agile for what it can do. But it's kind of crazy, man. Remember one of the first time you saw one of those? I thought it was, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. You packed my Patriot missile system in those many times? Yeah. Good old C5s, man. What is going on? Can I get up here? It kind of feels like that, yeah. Or I've never flown on one, but man, I I bit in one that was broken in Germany actually, because like we were we were like getting ready to go like fly that day. To, I think we were flying down to like I think Kandahar or something like that from Ramstein, and uh, it was crazy. Like we were so far delayed because I think we had maintenance issues too. So we were like just we we're like hey like I I was like had all my stuff done like the load was loaded. Um, you know, I uploaded the form F, which is the, the, the balancing of the jet. So I was like, Hey, can I go over and look at that C5 that's open on the ramp? So I was like, yeah, I walked over there, just jumped on it and it was, I was all good. I was just like blown away. So yeah, it was fun. Oh man. Construction help construction semi trailer. What? Delivered to the town movie set. Where's this at? This is in the next map, I guarantee it, yeah. I saddle. Is this Cliffside Road? This is on the next map, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay, cool. Next map. Not worried about it. Well, shoot. I'm going to go to the restroom real quick. So, we will be right back. I'm going to get some more coffee. So, yeah, hang in there, y'all. Back. 
Let's see here. What do I got to do? I'm putting on my, my slippers right now because my feet are freezing. Yikes. All right. General needs food badly. Speaking of food, I need food badly. What's going on with my controller? Connect. Okay, well that was weird. Okay, um... Business, that's cabins. I don't want to mess with that stuff right now. I probably, actually I probably do, yikes. Um, the construction, I probably can do this. I think I probably can do this, yeah. What's by the lake? Where's that construction rig at? What? Maybe it's not here. Construction semi rig. Oh, it's it's here. I guess that's it. Okay. Oh, okay. I see. Gotcha. All right, let's go do this real quick. Hmm, should I pull the boar out? No, you know what? Yes, this is what we're doing. Yes. I don't have the P16, but I do have the P12. Gateway, wait, what, what gateway? Oh, shoot. Oh, it's right there. Oh, yikes. Okay, my bad. Good catch. I was like, wait, this is what happens is I get. Oh, okay. Start looking other places, man. I did this last time I played. I would go to the wrong gateway. I would go to the wrong places. Good catch though. I would have went all the way to the gateway and been like, oh, well, where's it at? I thought I was doing a lone wolf. What's wait, what's lone wolf do? Take the long route. He likes odd routes, yeah. Man, I gotta say though, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of dreading season twelve right now. I mean I'm kinda like interested to see how I think I'm just dreading it because a hundred, how do I say this, a hundred and eight missions, I think it's a hundred and eight, a hundred and eight missions when you first start the game and, and step in and just look at all the contracts, it's kind of overwhelming, but I think after playing it once, it, it's definitely not as bad. I kind of understand what I have to do, but still like just setting, like getting the plan set, implementing logistics. I'm still kind of fuzzy on the whole the whole crafting areas on Pine Line and like when I need to like pull out my trailers and stuff like that. Like what's a good time to. So it doesn't really matter because I mean shoot. 
I'm not really worried about money, so like if I do waste some money, it's not really necessarily bad. You're nervously excited for next season? You just finished season 12 100% nice. I don't, I mean, from my, what they're saying is season 12 or season 13, 13 through 16 is going to be, uh, they said they're going to be harder. I don't know, harder than some previous maps. So if they're talking about like, see, like year three, the year three maps, then yeah, I mean, It's going to be interesting, so we'll see. I'm going right by this stuff. Is it going to go by? Let's see. It's probably going to catch. I guarantee it. Hitbox going to catch? Kind of, but no. Kind of, but yeah. Oh, we good. What am I caught on now? Here we go. Wait. Oh, I see. It's that. Are you serious? I'm caught on that? Are we for real? Get, get, dude, get real, okay? I'm caught on that. I can't believe it. I'm literally caught on a roadblock. Is there a winch point over here somewhere? the dumbest. Best to start running on empty to get a trailer than alternating the bridge jobs. Yeah, that's actually kind of what I was thinking. I didn't know what the mission was for the trailer. I think it's... What trailer was it? Uh, is it the... What trailer is it? Is it the, the step deck there? I should have honked first. I probably should have when I went across, yeah. But yeah, Victor was right. I should have switched trucks. I forgot about that little exploit. That's so crazy that it actually stopped me. Okay, so to the movie set. That's a crazy a second here. Like, I think, man, if if pictures at night look good, I would love to take this picture. But the thing is, I don't know. One thing I do like about uh, season 12 is the darkness isn't really that dark. Like you still have some type of like ambient light that's kind of present.
ever saw an aurora in real life yeah whenever i went to uh anchorage so uh, first time i saw it was in the winter i forget what year it was i actually have pictures of it in my phone i uh, went to anchorage and in the winter time and when i landed at elmendorf elmendorf air force base um jumped off the jet and yeah it was either we were landing or we were taking off late at night i forget i forget but i, I remember having the jet shut down and basically like the ramp wasn't even really well lit and i just looked up and i saw the aurora and i was like wow Step deck works well enough to go get two metal beams from reactive. Yeah, I think I could go just go to reactive. I mean, or I could just go down to the flatland. Flatland and go right down and get metal beams there too. So it's like, actually, wait, no, you can't get you can't go to flatland because everything's like blocked off at first, right? I think this time though, I will, I will go to Flatland first after I complete pretty much all of Pine Line or the, as much as I can do in Pine Line. Did I see colors as well? Yeah, I saw green. There's actually a lot of Aurora lately. That's kind of cool. What is... What am I caught on? This thing again? Are you serious, dude? What is going on with this stuff? I'm getting caught on everything. Nice, dude. It's huge, but it'll make things go twice as fast. Thanks. Okay, nice. You got two, one for the roadblock and one for the bridge, then got two from the metal works. See, I don't know. So like, I didn't get any metal beams last time from, uh, from reactive. So yeah, I don't know. It's probably, probably faster though. Okay, let's do this. Wooden planks. I probably, honestly, I probably need to start doing this wooden planks crap here. Cause, uh, oh man. There's only two there. What? One medium. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, I need to start doing planks. I need first off though. I need to actually do something. I need to bring this down. Where's this at? Yeah, we gotta get him down off this mountain here. Back into town. Auroras are like the last few weeks. That's cool. <clears throat> when there's a spike in solar activity. Oh, wow. So that, that solar eclipse is actually... My house is kind of... In the direct... I don't want to say direct. It's it's pretty much almost in the, the, the direct like line that the, the eclipse is going over in, in Ohio. I think it's mainly going over like the Cleveland area. So like I'm a little bit southeast of Cleveland, Ohio. So... Yeah. I'm going to like I'm going to have pretty good view of it. Really it'll be right uh, yeah, same here. It'll be almost right over me as well. Honestly, I probably won't have good weather. North northeastern Ohio has like some of the most cloudiest days in the United States. Like today we have snow. It's kind of crazy. We got we got like three, almost four inches of snow 
today, but it's melting because like the, the temperature is like right above freezing. But we, we legitimately, legitimately got snow today. It was kind of cool. You envy whoever can see the eclipse? I mean, I'm hoping I can see it. Kind of cool. I don't know if I've ever seen one before. Toledo, Ohio is the king, king of cloudy days. Toledo is pretty cloudy. People are planning vacations for it. You know what I should have done? I should have, like, Airbnb'd my house out for, like, however much. And just went and stayed at a hotel for, like, a night or two. Maybe made some profit or something. I want to look this up. Okay, let's see this. <laughs> there it is, guys. There it is. Display. The most gloomy cities in the United States. Anchorage, Portland, Pittsburgh, PA. Okay, so listen to this. Pittsburgh, PA, Cleveland. I'm I'm literally equidistant between both of these. Like my house is an hour and like 15 minutes from both of these places. Columbus, Ohio is like three hours southwest of me. Toledo is completely west of me. So look, 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 look at this. Four places in Ohio. Like one, two, wait, no. No, it's no, it's it's three places in Ohio. One, two, and three. I was counting Pittsburgh, but Pittsburgh's uh but that's crazy, right? Yeah, cloudiest days, man. And then I've lived in I lived in Arizona, which had like the least gloomy days. Yeah, it was like sunny all the time, man. Phoenix was crazy. Honolulu, I've lived there. So yeah, pretty, pretty wild, man. Cedar Point is the bomb. Yeah, when it's warm, yeah. You lived in El Paso? Ah, oh, come on. I've seen people do this last year for the eclipse in Australia. Prices were crazy, like 2K per day. Yeah, honestly, that's probably what I should have done. W. I probably should have done, should have did something of those sorts. It's just like, I don't know. I would have to like uproot my cats and stuff like that because I have two cats and, and then yeah, I'd have to like, my, and the thing is like my wife has to work, right? So it's like, she works from home. So it's it just kind of, it's like meh. Like for a couple thousand dollars, it's like, is it worth it? Well, it, I mean, it's personally, I think it's worth it, but it'd be a lot of, a lot of like stress. doing R&D for Patriot missiles and White Sands. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's right. It is 2K. Yeah, but the only problem is it's that wouldn't go toward that as well be just because of being married and having big boy things that I probably would have to throw that at or that would go toward like that actually would go toward replacing my my air conditioning unit and basically the whole system. So like my, my, my house was built like 12 years ago. So like everything that was put in it, it was almost like construction grade. So it's like, I feel like my house is coming due for like everything, like appliances and stuff like that. All those things are starting to, to get older. Like last year we, f we found out that our, like our whole like heating and cooling system like needs essentially yeah, it needs it needs done again. So it's probably gonna go it would probably go to that, to be honest. It sucks being a big boy, you know what I'm saying? What do I have the ANK for? Oh, that's right. Alright, so I guess here's where it starts. Short logs, I'm guessing. Production. 
I think we need to go check this real quick though. And the whole landscape was covered in crescent moons. That's wild. And you know what? Renting, renting a house or renting. <laughs> okay, so wooden planks. Okay, so I, basically I just have to create cabins. Create cabins and just wooden planks. Wait, hold on. Doesn't this create wooden planks too? Like where's the, oh, there we go. Short logs is two. So it's every log is two. So I think I need like five loads and I think I'm good. I think five loads of short logs is probably sufficient for the whole the whole region. If I'm if I'm correct, I think. All right, let's cook it. Let's go do some, uh, this has to be done. It has to be done and someone has to do it. So the old cheeser is coming out. Do I play with mods? No, I don't. I think if I didn't, create any type of content on trucks, like doing truck reviews, I probably would. <laughs> but because I, I don't, because I create truck reviews pretty much, yeah, all the time, or a lot of them, yeah, I just don't. Although I have, I have played with, uh, trailer mods before one light Why, where's the other light at okay so honestly hopefully I have this right <laughs> Hopefully like 15, what is it, 15 logs will be enough. 15 makes two, four, six. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping 15 logs is gonna be enough. Five loads. I'll do six probably just to. Yeah, maybe six logs, six sets, I guess. Six of them times three. You think 15 is plenty? Okay, cool. I mean, last time I, I brought way too many. Just brought way too many. 12 is enough? Okay. I'll probably do 15 just to kind of... Uh, Yeah, you get two planks per log, yeah. Oh wait, did I say... Oh, I think I know. I know I did Victor there. I think I said I get two planks per load or per packed load. Okay. No, you're right. You get two planks per log. Okay. I was. I must have said something different. Okay. Never mind. It's like I said one thing, but I was. I think I was meaning another. But yeah, you guys know I do that a lot, probably. 
All right, here comes this stuff. I don't even need that thing. Okay, let's go like this. Let's go unpack. There's three. Fifteen will get you thirty. Yeah, I think that'll be okay. So the thing is, I also have to make cabins. That's, that's another thing, so... There's five. Seven. Don't fall. Please don't fall. Ah. Oh. Messed it all up. Just had to, man. It just had to had to mess me up. What's that? Nine? Am I at nine right now? I think. Okay, I need to sneak grab it. Stop playing around. That's even better. <laughs> oh no. Oh wait, there we go. Dude, are you serious right now? Just chill. Okay. Let's see something real quick. Don't pack. There's always one, yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine so far. Let me check my messages. Okay. Actually, hold up. Center this out. Eleven. Be 13, and then I'll just do basically two more. Two more of these, and that's it. You know what's great about the Forester, though? The great thing about the Forester is you can easily get your logs out of this cradle. Opposed to using like a sideboard semi. But I mean, you can't. Long logs, transporting long logs with this thing is it's kind of. I don't say sketch. It's not sketch at all, but it's just kind of weird. Okay, so let's go like this. Alright. The crane is nice on it, yeah. Hopefully, I'll go down this hill, hit the brakes, and all this stuff will slide forward, hopefully. Eh. 
And one, two, go. Ah, that was okay. Whatever. But yeah, the crane is definitely nicer. Much nicer than the, uh, the other one. You know, honestly, I feel as though this map, I almost feel it's a lot. I feel like it's, it might be easier than season 10. I don't know though. I have to like, like going up that hill on the north or west side, like up there, it can be pretty, pretty crazy. It can get pretty hairy at sometimes, but I don't know. I definitely think both, both season 10 and 11, the second maps are much easier than the first. They're just like much more relaxed. And I think they even have like less, less content on both of them. I think they, it's almost like they, they, everything is like loaded up front. Like all the mission set is, is more or less like front loaded. And then like the, the, the later sections of both maps are just kind of like a little bit lighter. can't remember one from another well this one has snow the other one doesn't I think British Columbia definitely had a lot more like elevation but this one like climbing up that hill you definitely feel as though you're climbing elevation that's for sure that's just me nice it's morning Oh, for season 12? Uh. You know, I'm thinking about it, actually. Like, I'm wondering... Like, season 12, I'm trying to figure out what map I like the most of season 12. I don't think it's Pine Line. I don't really think I enjoyed Pine Line that much. For some reason. I don't know. Even though I think Pine Line was like the one that caught everyone up the most though. There we go. Double it up, baby. I think it's either a toss up between Reactive Zone. Actually, shoot, actually, I might be Averio Hills. Averio was pretty sweet. Actually, might be a Virio. What's going on with my crane? 
Okay, we're just gonna go like this. But yeah, I think it goes like Averio Hills for me. Probably either Flatland or Reactive Zone. And then Pine Line. I don't know. It's odd. Your attention span lasts about <laughs> one mouse click. I'm using the law crane. All right, so let's sit that down. Let's do a little bit of package here. Let's do this. You know what I'm really glad about is that the seasons that I had to do a lot of like this manual stuff here are kind of over. I just remember doing so much work with with logging. Doing craning over and over and over again. Just mass amounts of logs. I mean, honestly, like, it gives you some practice, though. Okay, I don't need two. I would love to have two at, at a different time, but yeah. No. Grab this one right here. Let's see if I can get this one right here. best Sunday you've had in a while. It's good, man. It's good. It is a very chill Sunday. It is a very, very chill Sunday. And I'm playing something you can watch, yeah. It's good, man. I know when Naked Dave watches, because he hasn't played much of this, he uh he puts it on like 140p just to like listen. Cause he doesn't want any spoilers. Whoa.
Okay, don't fall, don't fall, just stay where you're at. Wait, the stations in Season 12 were limited? Oh, that's right, they were. No, they were, that's right. I think I remember that. I don't know if I... I think... Yeah, I think they were limited, but I, I don't know why. For some reason, I just didn't really care. I was like, eh, whatever. Which is quite lackluster on Sundays. Yeah, I think everyone's kind of chilling on Sundays, but... No. Alright. Cradle's getting in the way. Can't depress. Why in the world can I depress? That is so odd. Now that you finish season 12, you can actually watch me and enjoy it. Yeah, I'm kind of the same though. I won't, I don't really. Actually, you know what, man? I don't know. Any more with, with like SnowRunner? I guess, yeah, maybe, maybe I, I don't like spoiling myself though. That's kind of why I won't, I won't play much of the, uh, the PTS. How do I say this? Like, if I played the PTS, I probably wouldn't play live server. If that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no reason for me to play the live server PTS if I play PTS all the way through and then make content on it for people. So, like, I could do that and be like, oh, the first one done. Do you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I'll never do that because, yeah, I just don't, I don't think it's worth it. I almost want to just jump back in my step. <laughs> Where's my actual tractor at, though? Yeah, year four is going to be... I don't know what year four is going to be like, honestly. Oh, I could just run down that, but I'm not going to. I'm interested to see how they they make year four. Yeah, sometimes I feel bad, Jelly Beans, of not playing the PTS because I almost feel as if I should be doing my part to, I guess, like help find the bugs kind of like other people do like other data miners do like you know what i'm saying but like then again it's like they're i feel like saber sometimes just use, uses the pts just to get free labor do you know what i'm saying like they're just using people in a sense to like here you go here's the game um let us know if there's any bugs so like it you know it doesn't take from their resources to for their people to you know play it over and over and over again to find those bugs you know us the players or people who are you know play the pts they're playing it and finding the bugs you had to finish this month because i get a new game in the dlc that will be breaking up my time that's good That's what it is with every game that has a PTS. Yeah, I think that's that's kind of uh, unfortunate, though. What new attachments or unique machinery? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're gonna they're gonna bring out. I just think that's I don't know. That's just my opinion, man.
But hey, I mean, like, if, if companies can get away with doing it and people will play the PTS, like, early... I think that's another thing is, like, the, the, the appeal of playing something early, earlier than everyone else, like, I think it draws people in. And then, you know, you have people that are, uh... That'll go and actually, like, report things, report bugs and stuff like that. Okay, I'm, I'm switching trucks here. I like the Kenworth. But it's, uh... Yeah, we'll roll with, I'm gonna roll with the step a little bit here. You were always hoping for more use of the scouts if you're happy for expeditions? Yeah, I think uh, that's kind of like where I think the scouts should stay is expeditions. a great use for them honestly they can they can legitimately put in a ton of work for scout trucks now you know what i'm saying so mm, what's this one metal beam there i guess i can just grab that metal beam real quick and take it over i guess we'll just do that now so then i won't have to craft one very odd. The quantities in this this one right here is kind of like very odd. Oh, that's never mind. There's like unlimited amounts of bricks and stuff like that in there, so never mind. Yeah, I know. Yeah, only really the uh, the scout fuel trailer is like the the most used. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of interesting, right? All right, over to get some wooden planks. Man, I actually, I really hope, <clears throat> here's what I hope. I hope that, oh man, it's gonna be bad though. Because I think the the PTS is gonna come out, um, oh man. Probably early April, end of March, right? And then we're probably gonna have, yikes, I don't know. We'll, we'll probably have, Probably have the live server, I'm guessing like three weeks later, maybe a month later. So honestly, maybe May, I'm guessing. PTS is usually like, I think we had a very short PTS for, I think season 10 though. So I'm guessing like two to four weeks of PTS. Okay, I'll, ch I'll check it out. I'll check it out, Rob. But, yeah, the end of April, I'm going to be playing Manor Lords. When that game comes out, well, I'm, I'm, I'm on it. I think the game has been in production for, like, a while. I'm pretty sure it's it's worked on by a single person. I, th I think. I think. I am excited for it it's so bad. It's probably not very exciting to watch or just stream um, because it's like a city builder almost, right? Medieval city builder type style. But it just, it looks amazing. 
It's kind of like Age of Empires, but uh, in my opinion, I think it's going to be better. Hopefully. Oh, I think my wife is home. Guys, I will be right back. I'm going to help her bring in some stuff, so I will be right back. All right, let's do this. Scoot in here. Whoa. Got to turn on this uh, generator thing. Swap cabin. So I need one, two, three. Grab this one. I'm gonna grab that that wooden beam or that metal beam too as well. Just take everything. Let's get it all done in one go. One push.
know what? I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna unpack. Let's go unpack. Since now we know that they're lighter. Unpacked, yeah. You just started Tamir. You got any tips? So I actually have a, a route runner series that actually shows routes for Tamir. <clears throat> the only one I would say that um, I did not add to that. There's probably a couple others, but here's a main one that I probably should have added and I didn't add. Is the easiest way to get north south on Zimnagorsk, which actually is a pretty, I would say, heavy region for mud. Is just driving down this road. And this curves right here. And then what do you do is you just follow this curve, jump up on here, follow this path that comes down. And what I do is I just like, I jump off this path and then basically just run down this hill around these trees. There's a little water creek right here. I would stay close to these trees. So if you have to like stop, um, yeah, if you have to stop here, you can go like winch yourself through. But yeah, that's kind of how I get like north to south really fast. Because you're going to have to come north to south, south a lot because, yeah, you have a lot of warehouses down here to get stuff that goes to a lot of these places. So that is, uh, that's what I would do there. Other than that, I mean, there's a lot of other ones I've used, but I think the Route Runner series will, will kind of give you an overall, like, pretty good routes. Do I have any tips for the Russian crane? I'm not very good at it. it handles like a wet noodle. Uh, try to keep try to keep the crane when you're handling heavy cargo try to keep it as close to your truck as, as possible that's the only thing I could say man have like I guess even with like single piece of cargo it's not as bad it's not really bad um, but the weakness shows on like two two slot cargos. Do you know the series? Okay, cool. Yeah, I would definitely check that out. But yeah, you're going to find good trucks, man. Like this is actually one of them. One of the good trucks you find there is the Step 310 Echo. And I mean, at first glance, yeah, you are you probably might not think it's much, but it's actually a pretty good little truck. Not to use the Russian crane, it's garbage. Yeah, you could just negate it all the negate using the Russian crane, just then uh, use NA trucks. So. That's another good one. But yeah, you just want to keep your, your crane close to your truck. You want to keep it collapsed, almost like where it's at now. This is going to be your maximum strength. Anytime you extend, you're losing strength with any crane, really. So this one shows the most, like how, how terrible it is with, uh, with strength. So, yeah, so like, I mean, you still can pick up like small scouts and stuff with a Russian crane. I've done it and like place them in a bed and stuff. What I would do is like, I wouldn't do it like this. Like if I was going to pick up a small scout, I'd jackknife like this. So then my crane and then my scout would be like right here. I pick up the scout and then just turn them right in here. So I'm literally just my pivot points right here and I'm just kind of turning them. So it gets kind of jank. It's jank. It, you're, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's kind of, uh. It's frustrating to go from like using an American crane to to this type, but yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah, you'll see like even this, like it's hard for me to pick this up. Like you see it, <laughs> like even metal beams. So like I have to come in a little bit and you can see it, I, I, I retain some strength when I'm farther in. And then what I do is I try to get it into a position and I extend it because it, it's going to fall inevitably like right there. Yeah, see, I didn't press down. It just fell. So I'm just going to leave it like this, honestly, because it's not going a long distance. Yeah, it's good practice then. You're 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 spot on then. Delivered to the town movie set. Make sure I'm going the right way. Okay, yeah, we're going right away. That's
where does it go? Oh, back there? Okay. Oh. Whatever. Whatever. We'll just drag him to the location. off here too. And get out of here. Dude, the movie set is coming along. Sweet, 70, 7,900, 7,950. We absolutely... We did it! <laughs> got some absolute stunning shots. We did it! We did it! No! <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever thought about getting into acting? No. Sweet, so 41%. And that is the end of the stream today. We are going to close down shop. 41 41% is not bad. I, I kind of wanted to get a little bit more done today, but yeah, three hours is, was pretty good. Um, I think the logging part, um, just setting up all that, that stuff that kind of took a little bit more time than, uh, than I wanted, but honestly it kind of went a little bit faster than I expected. So what we have like 160,000 so far. What do I need to do now? Wait, it's took a success. Maybe start trailer to there. Honestly, we're going to start moving pretty quick. Um, this is going to be a pretty big task, actually. This is going to be a lot of back and forth. Um, pretty big one. There's a lot of missions that go all the way up to the top. And uh, yeah. So that's why I have a support trailer or a support truck up there. So yeah, we'll probably do the, the way to success next time. We'll do business before pleasure. Get these cabins and all this stuff up to the top. Um, after that, I don't know. We might honestly, we'll see what else pops up after, after those get done. And then, yeah, we're going to move on to the next map and then start cracking away. So yeah, guys. So anyways, I appreciate y'all stopping out today. It's been great um, to have y'all on a Sunday. Much appreciated. It's great hanging out with y'all. So you guys go enjoy the rest of your Sunday. I will see you guys back here tomorrow. Pretty much same time, same place. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time is the start time for the stream. And until then, guys, God bless. Stay upright. Love y'all. See ya.